Macro hard. Elon Musk says it's a real project, a purely AI software company that does what Microsoft does, but with autonomous agents instead of employees. The name may sound like a parody, but it's also a direct shot at Microsoft, the company that has defined software for half a century. And this isn't about another one of Elon's hypes. This story is about the countless ways, many of which we haven't even fathomed yet, that AI could disrupt the world as we live it today. But first things first, what is a simulated company? It's the idea that nearly everything we associate with a software firm, coding, testing, documentation, support, even live operations, could be run by swarms of AI agents in the background. Humans stay at the center, but instead of managing thousands of employees, they orchestrate thousands of AI workers. So the question is serious. Could Microsoft itself, or any pure software firm, be rebuilt as a simulated company run by AI? If Musk is right, Macrohard could make Microsoft itself obsolete. Microsoft today is more than just lines of code. It is Windows, Office, Azure, GitHub, Xbox, and LinkedIn. Behind these products stand tens of thousands of developers, testers, product managers, compliance officers, support staff, and sales channels. It's both a software factory and a global distribution empire. MacroHard's challenge is aimed squarely at this factory model. Could the internal machinery of Microsoft, the part that builds software, be simulated in software itself? Large parts of that machinery are already shifting toward automation. Writing and refactoring code, generating tests, triaging bugs, creating documentation and SDKs, translating content, even orchestrating DevOps pipelines. All of these are repetitive and rules-based. Today, they're supported by co-pilots and automation tools. MacroHard's vision is to take this much further. Swarms of AI agents running continuously in the background, simulating what human teams do around the clock. However, not everything can be automated. Strategy, market entry decisions, acquisitions, regulatory negotiations, brand management, partnerships, and high-level product design remain human responsibilities. Enterprise buyers and regulators expect accountability, and no one is putting an AI agent on the hook for a billion-dollar mistake. The more realistic model is hybrid. Perhaps 70 to 80% of engineering and support could be handled by agents, while humans focus on oversight, creativity, and direction. So is AI actually ready to take over entire companies? The short answer is no, at least not yet. But the momentum is undeniable. Every month, new breakthroughs are pushing AI closer to the point where simulated firms could move from speculation to reality. To get there, however, several barriers must fall. Here's the breakdown of what has to happen before AI-driven companies can truly scale. First, reliability has to reach human-grade performance. Benchmarks like SWE Bench still show AI falling short of professional developers on real repositories. But reliability on its own is not enough. Enterprises also demand governance, secure repository access, audit trails, and signed code so that agent contributions are verifiable. Then come the economics. The cost per line of production-ready code, measured in GPU hours, must undercut human labor costs for the model to scale. Context is another missing piece. Today's models need structured access to entire code bases, documentation, and issue trackers, otherwise their outputs remain brittle. And finally, there are policy and liability questions. Who owns the intellectual property for AI-generated code? Who is responsible if an AI patch breaks a live system. Until these questions are resolved, enterprises will not rely on agent-driven pipelines at scale. Enough theory. Let's ground this in reality with a company you already know. Take Electronic Arts, one of the largest game publishers in the world. Gaming is among the most complex challenges in software. It fuses code, physics, art, design, audio, localization, and constant QA testing. To handle this, EA employs around 14,500 people worldwide, spending nearly $2.5 billion a year on R&D 
about a third of its entire revenue. Major titles can take three to seven years to ship and often cost hundreds of millions before a single marketing dollar is spent. Now picture EA as a simulated company. Instead of thousands of coders, artists, and testers, you keep a small human creative core, responsible for vision, storytelling, and compliance. Around them run swarms of AI agents, writing gameplay code, generating art assets, localizing content into dozens of languages, and running thousands of playtest simulations every night. Pre-production shrinks from months to weeks as agents prototype mechanics and levels in parallel. Production accelerates, with automated test harnesses catching regressions long before human QA sees them. And once a game launches, live ops content flows continuously. Balance patches, updates, and new content authored by AI, monitored by humans, and safeguarded by automatic rollback systems. Think about a single franchise like Battlefield. Today, hundreds of engineers code the engine, hundreds more produce art assets. QA testers run endless builds. Localization teams translate content and managers coordinate everything across five or more years. In a simulated company, that pyramid of human labor collapses into a circle. A few dozen creative directors guiding thousands of AI agents in the background. QA becomes millions of automated test runs. Localization becomes instant with humans only reviewing. The structure shifts from armies of labor to orchestration of swarms. Costs shift too. Less salary for routine build work, more spending on compute, evaluation and governance. In the short term, companies might actually spend more as humans and agents run side by side. But if reliability improves, the long-term steady state tilts toward compute and tooling, and time to market compresses dramatically. Certification by console platforms and ratings boards would remain a bottleneck, but the factory behind it would run far faster. The upside is throughput and predictability. The risk is governance. If the audit trail or reliability breaks, you don't just face delays, you face platform bans or even legal liability. Zooming out from EA, what happens if MacroHard actually works? A lean AI native startup, 10 humans orchestrating 10,000 agents, could rival the output of entire Microsoft divisions. And the real disruption is not just operational, it's financial. Instead of billions in salaries, most of the costs collapse into compute rentals and evaluation tools. To Wall Street, these firms would not look like traditional publishers or SaaS companies. They'd be valued as platforms. Imagine a billion dollar business run by only 20 humans. The optics alone are powerful. Incumbents would suddenly appear bloated by comparison, while AI native players would be rewarded with higher multiples, just as Tesla was once valued like a tech platform instead of an automaker. But this model wouldn't just reshape companies, it would transform the job market itself. The first impact is obvious. Demand for traditional developers shrinks as AI agents take over routine coding, testing and maintenance tasks. Outsourcing firms and contractors would feel this pressure first. But new roles emerge. Companies will need agent wranglers, specialists who configure and direct AI swarms. Compliance engineers who track provenance, intellectual property, and liability. And strategic designers who translate business goals into prompts and constraints that AI can execute. Jobs don't vanish, they shift. The value of raw coding declines, while the value of oversight, governance, and creative direction rises. In this world, the winners are clear. Cloud and GPU providers thrive on insatiable compute demand. Platforms like GitHub and GitLab become the backbone of the agent economy. Testing and observability firms gain strategic value by certifying AI outputs. And companies with proprietary datasets and compliance expertise become indispensable. The losers are equally clear. Outsourcing firms built on cheap labor. SaaS players whose only edge is speed of shipping. Toolmakers who fail to open APIs the competitive edge shifts away from developer headcount and toward distribution 
compliance, and unique data. MacroHard may have started as a joke, but it forces us to ask a profound question. If Microsoft itself can be reimagined as a simulated company, what happens to every other software firm? The next decade will test whether incumbents adapt or whether AI native rivals, running swarms of agents in the background, take their place. And in that world, who do you think will come out on top? Legacy giants or AI native upstarts? Drop your thoughts below. I'd love to hear your take. If you found this breakdown useful, make sure you subscribe to StratiQ for sharper takes on strategy, tech, and disruption. And if you want to see how another giant, Tesla, is pivoting from cars to AI, robotics, and autonomy, check out my deep dive video here.